delivering a vaccine fairly quickly and safely will now be the next major challenge facing the country. And whatever our differences across this House, we've all a duty to play our part in this national effort and to reassure the public about the safety of the vaccine. Mr Speaker, this morning a priority list has been published for the first phase of the rollout. We understand that around 800,000 doses will soon be available, and that's good news. Because of the two doses that will be required, that means 400,000 people can be vaccinated in the first batch. So can the Prime Minister tell the House who does he expect to receive the vaccine next week? What the JCVI has, has, has concluded, the priority list will be residents in a care home uh, for, adult, for older adults and their carers to stop uh, transmission. Uh, all those uh, 80 years of age and, uh, and older, uh, frontline health care uh, and social care workers, uh, then all those of 75 years of age and over, uh, then all those of 70 years of age and over uh, the clinically extremely vulnerable individuals uh, and, and, and then uh, a, a, a list that I'm sure the House will want to, to study. I think it is very important at this stage for us all to recognise that this is uh, unquestionably good news. It's very, very good news. But it is by no means the end of the story. It is not the end of our national uh, struggle against, uh, against coronavirus. And that is why it's very important that the package of, uh, of moderate but tough measures that uh, the House voted for last night, the tiering system, is followed across the country because that's how we will continue uh, to beat the virus. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Prime Minister referenced the priority for the first phase and as he said the top two priority groups are residents in care homes for older adults and their carers all those 80 years of age and over in frontline health and social care workers I'm not criticizing that list in the slightest but it's obvious that that's more than 400,000 people and the Prime Minister will understand how anxious people in those particular groups are um, after having sacrificed so much so can the Prime Minister tell us the answer to the question that they're going to be asking this morning, which is, when does he expect that all people in those two top groups can expect to be vaccinated? Uh, beginning, as uh, my rival friend, the Health Secretary, has said, uh, from next week, uh, we are expecting several million uh, doses of uh, the Pfizer-BioNTech uh, vaccine before the end of the year. Uh, we will then be rolling it out as fast as, as we possibly can. But that's why I put so much emphasis, Mr Speaker, on the continuing importance of the tiering system uh, of mass uh, community testing at the same time as we go forward through these tough winter months, because we will need, at the same time as we roll out the vaccine, and he's right to ask about, about time tables, but as we, as we roll out the vaccine over the next few weeks, Mr. Uh, Mr Speaker, we will need to keep that tough tiering and testing regimes in place. This morning, the Welsh Government has already raised some serious practical problems about the delivery of vaccines into care homes. That's bearing in mind the temperatures at which the vaccines have to be stored. What plans has he put in place to address these particular problems of getting the vaccines safely and quickly into care homes, given the practical difficulties of doing so and the anxiety that those in care homes will have about getting it quickly? He is entirely right to raise the issue of uh, of care homes and the uh, ability, our ability to distribute uh, this particular type of vaccine uh, rapidly uh, into care homes because it does need to be kept at minus 70 degrees as I think the House uh, understands. We are working on it with uh, all four, uh, all, all, the, all the devolved administrations uh, in order to uh, in, ensure that the NHS across the country is able, and it's the NHS that will be in the lead, uh, is able to distribute it as, as fast and uh, as sensibly as possible to the most vulnerable groups. That's why it's also important uh, that we get the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine, uh, which we hope will also come on stream. Perhaps he could also pay tribute uh, to the work of the Vaccine Task Force, uh, which secured the deal with Pfizer and which uh, he 
uh, I think, criticised only a few weeks ago. Well, I pay tribute to everybody who's got us this far and we'll work with all of them to get us where we need to go next. This has to be something which we all pull together to deliver this as quickly and safely as possible over the next few months. I turn to the next question, which is public confidence in the vaccine, which is a real cause for concern because that's going to be crucial to the success um, of getting this rolled out across the country. Uh, as the Prime Minister knows, we've got the highest regulatory and medical safety standards in the world. Um, but it's really important we do everything possible to, to counter dangerous, frankly, life-threatening disinformation about vaccines. We on this side have called for legislation to be introduced to clamp down on this with financial penalties for companies that fail to act. So will the Prime Minister work with us on this and bring forward emergency? The vaccine will begin to be made available across the UK from next week. I would like to pay tribute to and to thank all those who have made this possible. It is the protection of vaccines that will ultimately allow us to reclaim our lives and get our economy moving again. Last question, Sarah Brickley. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The news this morning about the vaccines gives my constituents of Harmon and that light at the end of a very dark, dark tunnel. And the announcement on care homes is genuinely brilliant news and is something that I've pushed for as a Secretary of State will know, both in and out of this chamber. But as has been mentioned, mass testing is also a vital part in our fight against coronavirus. So can the Secretary of State confirm when this will be rolled out in tier three areas such as Hyndman and Hazenden so that we can continue to get our rate down and get our brilliant hospitality sector off again? My honourable friend is right. Uh, the candle of hope is burning brighter today. And uh, on the mass testing uh, that she is so enthusiastic about, I can tell her that this morning, when I asked my officials to ensure that the community testing programme that's being developed for Hindburn uh, is advanced as quickly as possible, they told me uh, that they had been, uh, they'd been told of the need for this by so many people, and so many people have been lobbied by the Honourable Lady, uh, that it was already in hand. And I, I suppose, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, that goes to show, and uh, that goes to show just how uh, vociferous my honourable friend is in fighting for the people of Hyndburn. <laughs>